Hi everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear. You can probably see I'm uh, away from home right now. I'm on vacation with my friends in Utah. We're going to do some hiking the next few days. Anyway, I'm still making videos while I'm on vacation. So uh, this is my third video on my sub-series on numerical integration. So today I'm going to talk about another numerical integration rule called the trapezoid rule. Um, here's an enlarged picture of uh, what's going on. So you got your integration region from A to B. This is a definite integral from A to B of some uh, well-behaved function f of x. And what you do is you, uh, you sample your uh, integrand at um, n, uh, capital N, points from A to B. You label them x0. You say x0 equals A and x capital N equals B. And xk is just the kth uh, value of x between a and b. Um, and then what you do is you just uh, connect um, the points. Uh, and that's how you get trapezoids. You, you connect the vertices of these um, bars, um, giving you a series of trapezoids. And you can use the formula for the area of a trapezoid. And when you do all that, you get this nice formula. So this is the formula. It's probably better to use a formula to draw a picture of the trapezoids. You don't really have to draw the picture as long as you have the formula. Um, so here's what it is. You start, you know, you, you're, you know, you're, you start with a, a multiple kit of constant on the outside, bn minus a over 2n. That should be a capital N the way I'm using it. But, um, you know, uh, b minus a is just the width of the integral, and you're dividing by n because there's n um bars and and um uh, sub intervals but then you also divide by two because you're using the formula for the area of a trapezoid um and then this is what you get so you get f of a you get actually get the values of f at the endpoints f of a and f of b if you like sometimes people write x zero for a and x n for b but then all the other ones you have to multiply by two so that's the rule pretty easy to remember and pretty easy to apply so now I'm going to just uh, go over a couple examples here. I, I decided to skip the kind of trivial example I was doing the last couple videos. Uh, I'm going to start with the integral of x squared going from 0 to 1. Because the integral from x to 0 to 1, you will get exactly 1 half again if you use the trapezoid rule. It turns out that just like the midpoint rule always gives you the exact answer for linear functions, trapezoid rule does too. I don't think it's too hard to see why. That's true because, uh, you know, um, you're sampling points that are already on the line you want. So, you know, when you're doing your sampling, you get the exact region that you're trying to integrate. But here, this is a non-trivial case, x squared. This is a parabola. And now we're, we're approximating the parabola by a series of trapezoids. So let's see what we get if we do this, if we apply this rule. So um, I just worked out the details um, on this slide. So let's start with a formula. Um, I'm calling this uh, area T. I guess T for trapezoid rule. So capital T is supposed to be an estimate of capital I. And we just apply the formula B minus A over 2 times capital N. Here capital N is 10. A is 0. B is 1. So here, you know, top line, just writing down the general formula. But then... Uh, when you actually plug in the numbers, I'm not going to go through every step of this calculation. Uh, when you're done with all this uh, calculation, you get 0 0.335. And that's uh, that's very close to the actual answer. That's only uh, that also only off by half a percent. Um, it's a half a percent too large. I don't think it's too hard to see why it's a little bit too large. If you if you approximate these uh, parabolic subregions by trapezoids, you'll see that the lines you get for the trapezoids for the tops of each trapezoids always overestimate the uh, the value of the par parabola. So it's not too hard to see why you get an overestimate. Um, uh, anyway, that's what you get if you uh, if you do this example. Let's do a little bit of a harder example. I think this is a more interesting example. Actually, I didn't give the same example before. But let's suppose we're applying the trapezoid rule to try to estimate this particular definite integral. The integral from 0 to 1 of square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And the reason I think this is an interesting exercise, 
You, you guys may know that y equals square root of 1 minus x squared is just the uh, equation of a, of a semicircle, the upper semicircle, where you're going from minus 1 to 1. And since our integrand is just going from 0 to 1, we're actually computing the area of a quarter of a unit circle. This is a quarter of a circle of radius 1. And I think you guys all know that the uh, area of a circle with a, a, you know radius r is pi r squared. You probably learned that in grade school. And so if r is 1, the area of the whole circle is pi. And here we're only taking one quarter of the circle. So the actual area should be pi over 4. I think it's pretty easy to see that. So we're actually getting an estimate for pi, or in this case, pi over 4. I could always multiply by 4 to get an estimate for pi if you wanted. But let's just do this particular example. So when we when we apply the formula again, in the top line, I just wrote down the formula again. And when you plug in the values, plug in the numbers, this is a little more messier calculation because we're working with square roots. So you have to add a bunch of square roots. But when you're done with all this, what you'll find is you get an answer that's about 0 0.776. And that turns out to be pretty close to the correct answer. It's about 1.2% too small. You get a not bad estimate of pi over 4. And if you, like I said, if you multiply this by 4, you get an estimate of pi that's only off by about 1.2%. And this is a little bit like what Archimedes did. I mean, he, he used a method of exhaustion for to, to estimate the value of pi. We're kind of doing the same thing. We're not using his method. We're not dividing the circle into pie-shaped uh, sectors. We're instead dividing it into these trapezoids uh, or um, segments, if you like, which you can approximate by trapezoids. But you can think of it as another method of exhaustion. So it's just another way to estimate pi. And I'm going to work out pretty good in this case. And of course, if you increase n, you'll get better and better estimates. Um, anyway, that, that concludes my video for today. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.